This is Gary Auden. I'm bringing you an Educast, the new conference phone technology that improves meetings and grows with you. Sponsored by VTech and Telecom Reseller. Today, there's two of us on this conversation, myself, Gary Auden, and Tommy Lee, who's Vice President of Sales, SNOM VTech Communications. And we're talking about conferencing systems. And if you think about conferencing systems, people say, oh, that just sets up a phone call. In today's world, we're looking for things that are attractive devices, dependable devices, versatile devices, and certainly easy to use because we're conferencing more than ever. As we always do, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. What are the common conference phone problems? And we kind of delve into those to some degree. What makes a good conference phone? What's its anatomy? Why do we have to have such good speech? And one of my comments is that people say, well, I have video conferencing. I said, video conferencing without good audio is useless. You have a picture, but you can't understand what's being said. So audio tends to be the most important thing we have to deal with. Secondary, we have video. Scaling. We've heard of the huddle room. It's one little room, a few people. Then we go to really large conference rooms. How do we handle that growth and still have a tools or a set of tools that'll do that? And let's go to the other end. Could I use conferencing systems as my personal phone? Just me, no one else. And finally, we're going to talk about next generation technology. So Tommy, let's start off with the first slide. Conference phone problems, and you have five of them here. Would you focus on those, please? Sure. Thank you very much, Gary. Um, one of the baselines that people expect from a conference phone is call quality. Um, regardless of desk units, uh, mobile handsets, you know, each one of those endpoints sets a very different standard in terms of audio quality. But one of the things that is never uh, brought down uh, in terms of performance is the, is the uh, voice quality of a conference phone. <clears throat> Typically what they do is that these conference phones bring in multiple parties on both ends of the equation and be able to listen to each other clearly. There are lots of technologies that go into conference phones such as you know noise suppression as well as many other things that people can do to enhance uh, the audio quality of the, of the phone itself. But we want to take it to the next level. Many of the conference phones that you have today uh, bring in things like wire type of microphones that extend an existing uh, conference unit that stands in the base and brings it to the external uh, microphones. Uh, you have some inherent problems on that because many people who bring in uh, mobile units, uh, if you ever heard or brought your phone near a speaker, very often these mobile units may introduce interference to a lot of these wires. And what we do is try to adopt a technology that not only meets the physical expectations, uh, but as well as the, uh, uh, the, the actual sound performance. So when people stand around, it is basically interference free. Now, we're talking about noise, but there's one point here, 78% background noise. That's a different kind of noise that's much harder to deal with, isn't it? Correct. Um, what I mean by background noise is Regardless of how well uh, a microphone is uh, with respect to a room, <clears throat> you can always tell there's a big difference between a person that sits in front of the conference phone versus a person that sits far away from the conference phone. Uh, that difference is always noticeable. And what you would want to have in an ideal world is to bring a conference phone literally in front of every single person that sits within the room or at least within each group. Now. Uh, you may accomplish that during wired sets, but the more wires you have, the more obstructive that type of technology is. And so what VTech has done is be able to uh, bridge this gap by bringing in wireless mics using a very interferless technology called DECT that uh, enables you to bring those mics over to you wirelessly. Now, you're talking about the phone itself, and I think the word on the next page is really useful. It's the word anatomy. What is the anatomy of a conference phone? Well, the anatomy of a conference phone is really a, a central hub. Um, you know, it, it's a unit that everybody sits around and wants to be able to talk into this hub and be able to transmit accordingly all of their, their, their audio voice uh, through the signal, through, through the network, and be listened by uh, the listener on the other end of the, uh, of the other end of the phone. Now it goes both ways, and one of the things that, that 
the anatomy of a conference phone is that it enables people for ease of use. Um, very often, it's a unit that sits uh, typically in most conference room. That's sort of a uh, a main unit that that really is owned by really nobody. Uh, a lot of different people use it, but you, it, we enable ours, uh, particularly the VTech conference phone, to adopt a person's you know Bluetooth email on their conferencing unit. And I'll get more into that in the in the in the future slide. Um, the ability the ability to expand from small to large conference rooms. Uh, very often in the marketplace, many people sell. Uh, small units for small rooms, and it's also very large units that cost you know twice as much for very large conference rooms. And beyond that, you have accessories that go uh, even beyond that unit. We actually have one base unit that is able to, as you mentioned earlier, to to accommodate everything from the large executive room all the way through to a very large conference room. And with all that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we want to minimize the cabling that goes in between. If you look at the photo that you see in front of you, that is really the ideal situation where everybody has their workspace in front of them, and they're not dealing with cables that connect, um, you know, the accessory microphones and speakers to the actual main unit. You have something that's just out of the way and there to serve you, and not necessarily you serving the unit itself. When I think about the next slide, we're talking about clear, natural sounding conversations. Most people just say, well, I'm talking to someone else I know. I find I'm talking to people around the world and with accents and without clear sound, those accents tend to hinder the conversation. So we need the highest quality possible. What's been your experience? Agreed. Um, I think with accents, uh, you know, even though, you know, accents just hearing voice to voice, uh, face to face may be hard enough to discern, but imagine you know, transmitting that accent through, you know, a, a, a uh, you know, a poor wireless unit, or should I say a poor conferencing unit, um, <clears throat> the, the problem tends to multiply itself throughout the network. And, uh, you know, what we use is using a wireless technology that basically prohibits the interference of any of the other wireless technologies that may exist in the room, such as Wi-Fi, as well as Bluetooth and be able to transmit very, very clearly your voice from the remote or the main microphone into the other person's ear. Um, as you note, uh, you know, VTech is a chairperson for the old DEC committee, and we try to leverage that technology through a lot of our products, as you will see very shortly. Is it correct that DEC is really just a wireless voice technology and does not depend on data technologies? Uh, correct. In fact, uh, DEC technology is a very, very mature technology. Um, it's been used for many, many years to, in essence, transmit uh, your voice from one unit to the other. And it doesn't depend upon having to rely on QoS technology based on Wi-Fi. Um, you know, when you want to use other wireless technologies, it highly depends on first come, first serve, as well as data queuing. Whereas DEC uses more of, I don't know, where I would say like kind of a walkie-talkie type of technology capable of transmitting your voice to the main unit, and your main unit has a hard connection to the wall, which gives it the high-speed uh, control and capability onto your network. So it's really the best of both worlds from a wireless audio transmission technology. I noticed at the bottom of this page, you're talking about a 12-hour continuous talk time. That implies that you have really good battery technology here, and that if you turn over the room, no one has to do a reset up or recharging of anything until the next day. Is that correct? Agreed. Um, the t wireless technology, especially related to the microphones, I've been in meetings where literally I've been in the room all day talking about numerous projects, and you have to have the technology that's capable of supporting those marathon type of meetings. And we make it very convenient for the user when they leave the room, whether it's for a lunch break or after the conference is done, you just pick up the mic and put it in the holster. Uh, of the main unit, and that makes it very easy to recharge it and to you know take it out of the holster. It's a matter of just pushing the unit down and pulling it right out of the holster and allowing it to serve you rather than to you serving the unit. So internal, there's a battery inside that once it's fully charged, will sit there and it's not something you have to think about uh, once it's out. You know, once you turn it on and, and, and you have it enabled, then it's there to serve you, uh, whether you're sitting close to the base unit, or furthest away, um, 
you know, it, it is there, and it's not a technology that 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 is there to help you do your job uh, at its peak. We talked about scalability a few minutes ago, and what I think you're demonstrating here is that a single product line could actually scale from very small to very large. Is that what you're talking about? Agreed. Uh, what I do uh, very often, uh, my own habits is I use the the uh, speakerphone 85 to 90 percent of the time. And in my world, as well as many other people's world, uh, you know, I could actually accommodate most of my calls <clears throat> through a personal speakerphone. Uh, that speakerphone could sit right by my desk if I wanted to. And if I have a corner table that people can sit on, I could actually extend a microphone from the base unit and have that person sitting there rather than to have them pull the chair over into my desk and have them huddle across and being able to talk over the unit. You know, this is a case where, where uh, you know, you're serving the unit rather than the other way around. Um, as the room gets larger, uh, what people tend to do is have extension microphones. Now, one of the things that we have done is not only provide an extension microphone, which we provide from the base unit, but we also have an extension speaker as well as microphones as well for the much larger rooms. And what that gives the end user the capability to do is not only to listen but to also have a speaker system in front of them so that and they're connected wirelessly so for a medium-sized room you have two large speakers that can go on either end or if you have a very large one you could put the main console in the center and two additional speakers as well as microphones on either side and supplementing that with wireless microphones as well so you can really scale to to the size of the room that you wanted to, and because we use deck, it's also capable of jumping rooms in a very you know short distance because you can have the speaker base in one unit and actually extend the uh, extension speakers to the, to another room, giving you a lot of flexibility in how that one speaker system works. You referenced using the speakerphone as an individual unit, but this picture here also shows an earpiece and a cell phone. Would you, how do you combine all those together? Um, the way I described it earlier, um, very often in the conference unit, it's used by a lot of people, so I don't necessarily have my personal directory on the conference phone. In fact, uh, the place where most people have their personal directory is on their mobile phone. So what I tend to do is that uh, I exploit the Bluetooth capability of the uh, Aerostation 752, which has Bluetooth. And what that gives me the ability to do is to be able to tap in to a lot of the contacts that I get on my mobile phone, be able to make a call, and transfer that call directly over to my uh, Aerostation conference phone, giving it the ability for me to use a, an open speaker uh, at, at its highest performance. Now, in those occasions when I want a private call, I can actually use an auxiliary headset so that I could also get a one-on-one -on -one call and not necessarily have you know my conversation broadcasted into the public. You've mentioned the term Aerostation. I think that's what we're moving into is the Aerostation family of devices. What are the benefits of this Aerostation that you've been able to develop? Correct. In the Aerostation, uh, there are actually two units. Um, there's one center base unit and there is one aerostation which scales from, from uh, a small room all the way to the large conferencing room. All of the technologies I spoke about uh, take care of wireless microphones. Each one has a special sweet spot depending on what type of conference room you have. Um, for those that, that actually have a single table that can be met by one, you know, either unit can actually do the job very well. But they all accomplish, uh, you know, the, the baseline echo cancellation, digital quality, as well as having the convenience features that I just talked about in the last few minutes. You mentioned the two error stations. Let's talk about the 754 first. Great. The 754 is a fantastic unit where you're more concentrated on having a central speaker. You know, this is great if, say, if you have a very large round table that everybody has uh, equal access to it. Or if you have a particularly square conference table that you don't have to worry about distance. In this case, that one base unit will serve audio performance fine, and you could actually spread the four remote microphones throughout the table to suit uh, the groups or the individual that is needed in the room. 
this doesn't have the Bluetooth or expanded speaker capability, but serves as a fantastic uh, center conferencing unit that could suit most applications. Now, the 752 is the one that actually can expand further, can't it? Correct. Um, it could do everything the 754 can do, but what it also does is, it, uh, with the, it, but it has two extended microphones, but what it can do is actually support an auxiliary uh, speakerphone as well as a, uh, as well as a uh, remote speak, uh, microphone in a separate unit that gives you far more flexibility in scaling from an executive room over to the large conferencing room. Uh, both of those units support a two-year warranty and again you know they all contain uh, wireless technology giving you the most flexibility in how to apply this um, audio technology to your conference rooms. The next slide has something called the 850. Is that something that's auxiliary to the 752? Correct. Uh, the 850 is the expanded speakerphone and microphone combined into one. If you notice, there are four separate or two separate microphones in all of the separate uh, 850s, and you can couple up to three of these per 752. So you can imagine having one unit that has three auxiliary speakers and you know the the audio performance is something you have to listen to to really appreciate its uh, audio performance level. Is it true that all three of these we just talked about are all wireless and we don't have the cables on the table anymore? Correct. Um, you can uh, connect them all to the base unit and as I shown in the very earlier uh, in the very early uh, conferencing table, they all connect to the base unit wirelessly through DECT, and it's something that is totally unobstructive uh, physically to the people, and it's something there to provide you the flexibility to give you the audio conferencing features that you're seeking. Does this picture illustrate what you've been just talking about? Correct. Uh, the difference between this picture and the previous picture is we show what the different unit models are, um, you know, from a scaling from a small scale collaboration room to a large scale. You typically would have one VCS 752 and be able to expand it accordingly by adding each additional VCS 850 or just if you're using a single unit, you could just use the expansion microphones depending on what your particular needs are. Now, I know the name VTech because I have one of your products in my office. It's an ATT phone built by you, and I know you build tons of toys. But how does VTech, though, relate to what we just talked about, the conferencing technology? Yeah, um, you know, many people uh, recognize VTech. It's a very well-branded name. Um, you know, we have a very large penetration within the uh, phone industry. Uh, we're a $2 billion global company that has a large presence uh, throughout the world, especially in North America. Uh, in addition to doing all that, we also have a contract manufacturing facility. And that contract manufacturing facility uh, develops, uh, you know, our business as well as consumer-related phones. Uh, beyond the Aeros station, we also have Aeros terminals that gives us the capability of going beyond just desk phones, uh, beyond conferencing phones, and be able to have the same technology applied to our desk phones as well. Um, as noted, uh, we also have a lot of wireless technologies, giving you a really a whole suite of desk phones, aerostation conferencing units, headsets, um, you know, all the things that related to your particular business needs beyond the, the consumer-based, uh, you know, baby monitors as well as uh, learning toys as well. Uh, you know, very recently, uh, VTech Technologies has acquired SNOME technology to go beyond and take that business level and take use the SNOME high-end audio technology and incorporating that technology into its business units, taking the entire line to the next level for, for uh, business performance. I'd like to bring up, to those who are watching, a really good video to watch about the scalability of the air stations, a good white paper that's a good reference to learn more about this. This is the VTech contact information to learn more about the products and what's available and their website. I'd like to thank you, Tommy for being part of this webcast, and I hope everyone benefits from it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary.